lot of people now with the restrictions globally being relaxed on sailing, a lot of people worldwide are being able to get back into their boats, but they're doing it with limited safety resource while clubs and facilities are still closed. A new normal is emerging. There isn't the organisation at the moment and there isn't the support facilities. We've got to learn to self-support, especially if we're sailing single-handed boats without a crew member to help us and if we're going out alone. So let's think of some guidance notes to consider in ways that we might stay safer without so much rescue cover in single-handed boats if we're sailing on our own. Several things to consider. Make a plan sail with a buddy it's much safer with two of you ideally one buddy who's capable of towing you home um, even upwind if you've got a good sailor with you who can tow you home upwind that's all the better agree on a plan and stay in communication and to do that it's good to stay together stay within hailing distance quite easy and have some sort of plan with maybe waving arms but you can stay in touch sail in the middle of the day so you've got more daylight to get home but if you need rescuing you're not pushing darkness Tell somebody you're going out and agree with them. You'll tell them when you get back and have them monitor conditions and have them able to raise an alarm if need be. You can have a check out and a check in procedure at your local club, like a whiteboard to sign out and to sign back in. Moving on to equipment, you can have a lot of equipment to make it safe for you. One of the most important ones is lots of black, grey and white sailing kit at the moment. Wear some white sailing kit. Have some arms or a life jacket which are red orange, yellow, those fantastic colours of the 1980s, which you can still look really cool in. Um, wear those and when you're waving your arms, you've got that much more chance of getting a taxi home at the end of the day. Take a tow line. Um, in the RS Aeros, our main sheet's a perfect tow line. I've got mine ready tied on here. I keep it in the back of the boat. I put it underneath my water bottle so it doesn't fall out. And this is here ready. And I, I know I can tow another RS Aero training partner home with my tow line. A paddle's a good thing. For a shorter distance, we can rock our boats and we can rock home quite happily. If it's a longer distance, you might find a paddle is good. Ken Fowler used that to get to Scotland when he got the calms in the middle of his crossings. Or a paddle, which is a one-handed paddle for single-handers, might be more ergonomic if you go a long way. Check out what you think is better. Take comms. I keep a whistle on my life jacket here and I keep it right in the pocket so if ever I was parted from the boat, I know I've always got it. It's fantastic if somebody just gets a jump on you off a start line as well. Take a phone with you. Lots of great waterproof cases for phones so that you can phone back. Have preset in the phone the numbers of the emergency services you might need or your point of contact ashore so that you can very quickly on your presets speed dials phone up there's apps available now download your local app there's apps worldwide for your local emergency services where you can log in where you're going when you're launching when you're coming back and if you don't log back in that will raise your alarm for you which is a great app service and if you can have that app readily open on your phone you'll be able to access it easily if you need to while you're sailing other comms to have a vhf a waterproof vhf would be ideal so other equipment you might want a length of rope one meter or two meter either four mil or three mil is ideal um, there's a, a loads of things you can fix with just a short length of rope in your life jacket pocket again so it's readily to hand and also a multi-tool so if you've got any shackles that need doing anything ropes that need cut having a multi-tool on you is really useful keep it close to hand with a whistle rope and multi-tool in your life jacket okay maintain your boat now there's not a great deal to go wrong with an aero um, like all boats the two things you really need to get home are your tiller and rudder and your mast so if you've got a boat with rigging check all your rigging not an issue in an aero tiller make sure your tiller is not going to break check your gudgeons check your pimples um, if you lose your rudder you're going to be a little bit stuck try not to fall over on your tiller so train yourself that if ever you fall out of the boat you hang on to the main sheet and you let go of the tiller that way you'll stay on the boat and you won't break the tiller. If you're climbing back in the boat, make sure you don't use the tiller to climb back in on. And try and limit the amount you stand up in your boat, because one day you'll slip over, a wave will catch you, and you'll fall over on your tiller and you might snap it. So you need your tiller to get home. However, even if you lose that, your training partner can tow you home 
with a tow rope. Not the end of the world, as long as you've got a tow rope and a training partner with you. Check over your boat, there's not much that can break on an aero, but check all the little things like the mast and the rudder are the big things that can break, but it's the little things that will lead to a donimo effect and that they'll they, they can all go make it such a bigger thing really quickly. So all it takes is a little knot to come undone and then have a capsize, it can be a downward spiral. So check all your knots, check the knots in your main sheet, check the knots in the bobble at the top of the main halyard. Um, the one thing that caught Ken out all the way to Scotland was the clevis pin. The only thing that broke in his aero all the way to Scotland was the clevis pin on the end of his main sheet block. So just check it, have a quick once over your whole boat and make sure that it's all good to go and there's nothing that's going to let you down uh, on your routing. Having made a plan, consider the conditions. Check the forecast and also look at what the real wind is because often the forecast can be wrong and there's nothing quite so reliable as what the wind's actually doing right now. Consider not going off out on an offshore breeze, especially if you're in a coastal location. If you're on a little lake, it's not the end of the world. You'll just drift up the far shore and maybe have a walk home. But if you're on a coastal location, an offshore wind could be a serious consequences. If you are on the coast or a tidal estuary, consider which way the tide's going. We're here at Limington, and if the tide was on the air, I'd be turning down tide when I get to the end of the river, no matter which way the wind was going, because when I'm capsized or if I lose my rig, I will drift upwind with the tide if the tide's against the wind. So I'll always turn down tide. So you've got to consider the tide as well as the wind, which way you'll go. So when, when we know what the risks are and we can minimize those, then we can make ourselves that bit safer and you can relax a little bit and have some great fun on the water and we all look forward to getting back and having some large racing against events again in the near future.